Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with some more math today. Today we're going to be going over another related rates problem. I know I've been doing a few of these on my channel recently, but I got another one here for you today. Today we're going to be doing a related rates cylinder tank problem. Um, so maybe you've seen a problem like this before. Uh, essentially, we have the cylindrical tank, just means it's a tank in the shape of a cylinder, with radius 5 meters, and it's being filled with water at a rate of 3 cubic meters per minute. And then it asks, how fast is the height of the water increasing? So this is kind of a weird problem because when you first read this, it seems like we don't really have enough information, right? It just says how fast water is being pumped into this tank. Um, it doesn't tell us the height of the tank or it doesn't tell us the height of the water at the moment when we're measuring. It really just tells us the radius of the tank and how quickly water is being pumped into the tank which this measurement here, three, three cubic meters per minute, that is a rate of how fast water is being put into the tank, which is a, a measure of how quickly the volume of the water in the tank is increasing. So essentially, we have some information about the volume of water in the tank and the radius of the tank, which pretty much tells us the radius of the water in the tank but we don't really have any information about the height of anything. So it seems kind of weird. Um, like maybe we don't have enough info to, to solve this. So that kind of makes you wonder, how are we gonna deal with the fact that we don't know anything about the height? Um, and you might be thinking maybe we could just put in some random value for the height and see what happens. Um, maybe we could come up with an equation that doesn't deal with the height. Um, but you know, you'll see as we kind of work through this, uh, that one of those options isn't really going to work, um, but it's actually going to end up working out okay. And I'll explain exactly why that is as we kind of go through this. So like I did in all my other related rates videos, um, and I'll link to a couple here um, in this video um, and in the description of the video as well, if you want to go check those out. We're going to go through the same four steps that I use to solve any related rates problem. Um, they're all very similar, and this one is no exception. They're all going to follow those same four steps. So we'll go ahead and go through those steps as I do in all my other related rates videos. Remember, the first step for solving any related rates problem is to draw a sketch of what you're dealing with. So we'll go ahead and do that first. So the problem tells us that we have a tank, which is a cylindrical tank, which just means it's in the shape of a cylinder. So we'll go ahead and start with that. So we have a tank in the shape of a cylinder. It also tells us that our tank is... It doesn't tell us the height of the tank, but it tells us that the tank has a radius of 5 meters. So we know this radius here is 5 meters. And we also know how quickly water is being pumped into the tank. So we know that water is going in at a rate of 3 cubic meters per minute. And what it's asking us to find is how quickly the height of the water is increasing. So if we imagine our surface of water here, as this water fills up, how quickly is this height increasing? This is what we're looking for, is how quickly the, the surface of that water is increasing. So this is really all the information that we are given. We don't really have anything else other than this. So based on this, let's go ahead and go on to our second step now, which is to come up with an equation, which we will take the derivative of later on. So whenever you're coming up with this equation, you want to think about a couple things to figure out what needs to be in your equation, what you can put in your equation, and what you need to avoid putting in your equation. So the first thing you want to think about is what are you looking for? We know that we need to find the rate that the surface of this water is going up, which in other words, what you could think of is how quickly the height of our water is increasing, how quickly this height is changing, would be exactly what, what is represented by um, the rate that the water is rising. So since we know that we need to find the rate of change of h, that would be the same as saying dh dt. That means how fast the height is changing with respect to time. So in other words, the speed that the water is rising. But remember, our equation should not have 
any rates of change in it. It should not have d anything dt in it. What we're going to do in the next step is take the derivative. So what you want to think about is what do we need to put in our equation so that when we take its derivative, we'll end up with a dh dt. Well, if we take the derivative of h with respect to time, we'll end up getting dh dt. So that tells us we need our equation to have an h in it so that when we go on to the next step and take the derivative, we'll end up with a dh dt, which is exactly what our question is asking us for. So we know that h has to be in this. What we also want to think about is what other information we know. Well, the only other thing we are given is the radius of this cylinder, which notice as this water fills up, no matter what height the water is at, it's always going to be a cylinder which has the same radius as the tank and the height will be changing. So no matter what level the water is at, whether we just started filling it or whether it's getting filled up to the top, the shape of this water is always going to be a cylinder with radius five. So we actually do have some information about the radius of the cylinder. So it's okay to have radius in our equation. And we also know how quickly the volume is changing. We know that the volume of the water in here is increasing at a rate of three cubic meters per minute. So we do also have some information about dv dt. Like I said, we don't want to put dv dt in our equation, but knowing that we're going to be taking the derivative of our equation, if we instead put v in our equation, once we take the derivative in the next step, we'll end up with a dv dt, which we know how to deal with. So we have some information about r, we have some information about v. Those are two things that it's okay to put in our equation, and we need to have an h in our equation. So what you want to think about now is what equation that you're familiar with relating to a cylinder specifically that relates its volume, its radius, and its height. Well, that would probably be just the, the equation for the volume of a cylinder, which you may be familiar with is volume equals pi r squared h. So this is something that you may have seen before. Um, it's essentially just the geometric formula for the volume of a cylinder, where r and h are the radius and the height of the cylinder. Pi is just pi, that's a known constant, it's about 3.14. So we now have this equation here which relates the volume, the radius, and the height of a cylinder, which is exactly what we wanted our equation to have. So now we've come up with our equation. However, before we move on to the third step and take the derivative, there's actually something we can do in this step that is going to make the rest of the problem a lot simpler. So normally in a related rates problem, we have, you know, this volume is changing, this radius is changing, and this height is changing over time. But in this case, since we're dealing with a cylinder, before I mentioned that as the water is being pumped into this tank and this shorter cylinder increases in height, the radius of this cylinder doesn't change at all. It's always going to be five meters. And that's because the sides of this cylindrical tank or the sides of the cylinder, they're perfectly vertical, right? They're, they're not going out like a cone would or, you know, going in, they're going to stay the same distance away from each other and they're always going to stay five meters away from the center of of the cylinder so as a result our radius of our cylinder is actually not changing over time over time the radius is staying the same it's staying at a constant five meters since it's not changing over time we can actually plug in our constant five for our radius right now I do really want to stress the fact that the only reason we can do this is because the radius is not changing. If the radius were changing in any way as time went on, as water was pumped into this, this tank, we would not be able to do this, and we would need to take the derivative and figure out how to take the derivative of the radius with respect to time. But since the radius is not changing, it's okay to go ahead and plug it in now. That's really the key that allows us to do this. And it really is gonna make things simpler for us going forward. So if we plug in five for our radius, we would get this, right? Just replaced our radius with five because we know that our radius is always five. And then we can simplify this. So that would just be volume equals 
5 squared is 25, so we'll just get 25 pi times h. So now, this is the equation that we'll want to go forward into the next step with. This equation is a little bit simpler because we only have one variable over here and one variable over here. So now, we'll go ahead and go into the third step, which is always going to be the third step for any related rates problem, which is to take the derivative of our equation that we just found with respect to time. So all we're going to do is take the derivative with respect to time of this whole equation v equals 25 pi h. Okay, so we're taking the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to time. So what that means is we need to treat v and h as functions of time. So they're not just variables anymore, they're actually functions of time. So when we take the derivative of v with respect to time, since v is not a variable, it's going to be a function now. We don't really know what the function for v is in terms of time. We don't have an explicit formula for it. So as a result, we aren't going to get an explicit derivative for it. So the best we can do is to just say dv dt. This literally just means the derivative of v with respect to time. So now we want to apply the same thing over here to this side. So remember, when we're taking the derivative of a constant times some function, we can pull the constant out of our derivative and just have 25 pi times the derivative of our function. So the derivative of h, it's gonna, we're going to have to treat h just like we treated v over here. h is a function of time now. It's not a variable. So as a result, when we take the derivative of h, we're just going to get dh dt. which literally just means the derivative of h with respect to t. That's it. So now we've completed the third step of taking the derivative of both sides. We've taken you know, the derivative of our equation with respect to time on both sides of our equation. So now we can go ahead and go into our fourth and final step of a related rates problem, which is to solve for the desired rate of change. So remember, the problem asks us to find how quickly the height of the water was increasing, which we, we determined in the beginning. You can go back and review that if you need to. But we determined in the beginning that this was represented by dh dt. dh dt represents how quickly the height of this water or the height of this shorter cylinder is increasing throughout time. So basically, we just need to take this equation and solve for dh dt. Before we do that, we will want to go ahead and plug in everything else that we know. 25 pi is just a constant. That's not changing. There's nothing to plug in there. But we do know the volume is increasing at a rate of 3 cubic meters per minute. So we can go ahead and plug in 3 for dv dt. And that will leave us with 25 pi dh dt. And then we can just divide both sides by 25 pi. That'll cancel that. And we'll just get dh dt equals 3 over 25 pi. And then we just want to think about our units here. The units of how quickly the height is changing with respect to time. The units of that is just going to be whatever the units of height was over whatever the units of time was. Our height, we could assume, is measured in meters because everything else is measured in meters in this problem. Our radius is in meters. The volume is cubic meters, so our height is probably going to be meters as well. Or not probably, it will be meters. And then the units of time the only indication of what time was being measured in is how quickly our water was being pumped in, which is in minutes. So our time is going to be minutes, which tells us the height is increasing at a rate of 3 over 25 pi meters per minute. So hopefully that really kind of helped you guys see how to work through a related rates cylinder tank problem um, like we had here. Really, it's just going through those same four steps of any related rates problem. Um, you want to apply those four steps to any related rates problem that you will have to solve, and it should get you to your answer every time.
If it was helpful for you, please like the video, subscribe. I'll be coming out with a video every Monday and Thursday. So check back for more. I'll be having plenty more videos. Um, if you have any questions that I did not address in this video, please drop it in the comment section below. I'd be happy to help answer any additional questions for you, especially those that I didn't answer in this video, uh, you know, that you're kind of getting stuck on. I'd be happy to explain them further for you. Also, I'll put in the description below a link where you can get my Calculus 1 study guide. It might be a helpful tool for you guys as you're working through these problems. I do have a section on that study guide relating to related rates problems. Um, so that could be helpful. Go check that out. But otherwise, that wraps things up. So hope to see you guys back soon. Um, I'll be coming out with another video in the next couple of days. And I hope you uh, subscribe, hit the little bell icon so you can be notified when that comes out. And uh, I hope to see you back soon.